Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching this uh, on this pretty f good uh, Sunday or day or any day of the week that you're watching this replay. I am Aaron Zero, and today, by special request, I will be doing a replay analysis. It's not really a live casting of a uh, AUSA in-house game, autumn game, but this time we will be doing the Tier 5 of the Southeast Asia Battle Cup division of the Dota 2's Battle Cup, which is kind of like a weekly tournament where uh, players form groups of uh, teams of five and challenge each other to captain's mode games. And the winner gets, I think, 20,000 shards and some unique emotes. Yes, so first let's hide this uh, camera. We're going to go through this as if it's a regular um, as if it's a, a regular live casting of a game, although it's a bit to my advantage because um, this game will is more for replay, so l I can like, adjust the speeds, you know, show probably show replays, but I don't think that's possible. <laughs> so we will see. Um, this game will take place between the first time B Cup winners and Penn Island. Um, so let's introduce first. The Players on both sides. For the first time, B-Cup winners, we have Mr. Smiley Face, Rubber Ducky, Thirsty, Rickle Pick, and Black Rose for you. And for Ed Island, we have Commendable Birthday Boy. Happy birthday, sir. Uh, he's also known, of course, as Z Lech in the server. Moon Silver, J Bud, Chesses, and Emperor. Um, so I had no idea though it was Z Lech's birthday. So, you know, if, if it's your birthday, Mr. Z Lech, happy birthday. If it's not your birthday, happy birthday anyway. All right, uh, bands are now coming in from both sides. Pan Island beginning to use the reserve time to probably deliberate this their second first phase ban. But they do immediately ban Abaddon, one of the heroes that did benefit this patch from the various buffs it gave, specifically to its base attack time as well as its um, as well as the cost reduction to one of its key farming items, Radiance. They also end up banning the Undying, who has actually seen a lot of play uh, re recently as a strong laning dominator, who can, who can, if he manages to get those decay stacks right, pretty much solo a lane 2v1 while allowing her lane mate to safely farm. First time pickup winners do ban the Razor. Um, the Razor, I say, has been a bit weaker since the changes to the Storm Surge shard pretty much not really killed, but did a number on the, um, I did a number on the uh, Bloodstone build. But Razor though is still a pretty strong choice. Probably indicates that they don't like Razor's kind of lane dominant ability, and they're they're not really sure on how to counter Razor. So you know you you kind of just ban it. They also ban the Spectre, which has been a pretty strong carry, especially here in the tier, actually here in the probably lower ranks. Um, Spectre, of course, known for global presence, known for his toughness, so uh, maybe just didn't want to take on the carry that they felt could easily jump the backline, wherever the backline is, and B-Cup, though, do end up revealing it. It's going to be Gyrocopter Lich on their first phase. Lots of magic damage, lots of initiation, lots of utility, especially on the Lich with the Frost Shield. So, uh, strong support duo from first time B-Cup winners. Let's see how Pen Island respond. They start off with playing the Witch Doctor, which classically um, this team does play more of an off lane role. They will, they might try to pair this one with an Io, um, which is wh which they did lift from. I think Western, uh, one of the replays they did watch from the earlier in either Western Europe or basically the DPC. So they tried a DPC strat that's been working for them. So. Let's see if they're going to push it. Now, they do pick the Storm Spirit. So pretty much show, show immediately that uh, the Storm Spirit is going to be playing their mid lane. Quite risky, but um, it, also, it also means that they probably might consider playing this Storm Spirit another role, probably off lane. But again, typically Storm Spirit is traditionally played as a mid laner. So to have Storm Spirit be picked first phase, though, is... Quite a bold choice for Pan Island. They're very probably feeling very confident in their mid's ability to control the Storm Spirit. Um, first time pickup winners do ban the IO, so they do recognize that the IO is going to probably be a strategy for which Doctor that amount of heals 
can come out making it nigh impossible to kill either Ayo or Witch Doctor. Penel and retaliate by banning both the Underlord and the Abyssal Underlord. Yes, that is his full name, but people just call him Underlord because you know Abyssal Underlord is a bit of a mouthful. And Silencer, one of the strong one of the stronger supports in this game thanks of course to global silence first time b cup winners do also ban the enigma so far um first time b cup winners have banned mostly supports actually though yes enigma is traditionally played as an offlane he can go as a really greedy really farm heavy boss for who kind of like remi reminiscent of the old jungle role our jungler role in dota where your offlane kind of just stays alone and the support just uh, soaks jungle, uh, stays in the jungle early, takes like a ton of farm, but when it comes out, it's pretty much like almost farm to a core. Pen Island do ban out the draw, though, probably in response to the, ba the IO ban as well as to help stop a hero that does mitigate healing. So, now that as soon as they have a witch doctor, I think healing might be a premium for Pen Island in this game. Um, nine, eight seconds remaining on the time for first time B Cup winners. Is, um, Draft time, they banned the Slark uh, for fighting fa uh, faster paced hero, and they end up following the Slark in Bark Ban into a Juggernaut. Ooh, interesting. Juggernaut. Uh, so, which is somewhat similar to Slark, has a very complete kit and is very suitable for newcomers and beginners of the game. So, selecting Juggernaut is like kind of like a, it's a good um, all things considered pick. Um, with the buff, with some of the buffs, Juggernaut that were given this has apologies. I have just rolled out of bed. I just saw the message from one of our Discord members. Like, oh yeah, do the replays. No, okay, fine. I have time. Um, Pan Island immediately responded with the Juggernaut pick with Snapfire and Lone Druid. Uh, Snapfire, and you know, I don't have a lot of setup though for. Pen Island, other than probably the Witch Doctor's Paralyzing Cask and Lone Druid, being able to root someone with his trusty bear companion. So, although it's not, it also means that Pen Island will be dealing a ton of magic damage as well on his lineup. The first time pickup winners do respond with the Tidehunter, so pretty good team fighting comp so far on first time v-cup winners pen island seem to be more of a ganking lineup especially with this snapfire storm spirit they'll be looking more for pickoffs they'll be looking more to play um to hunt for isolated heroes or heroes like pushing out the map which could be possible you know with a juggernaut which and v-cup win first time v-cup winners would probably respond by playing their supports closer to the tide hunter allowing the tide hunter to soak up all that good damage and Giving them space to rain back. Now, first time B Cup winners may be looking to pick up their mid laner. Meanwhile, Pen Island is looking to get their support. I think one more support, if I recall, cor if I recall correctly, when I saw the uh, graphic. I won't show you though, of course. You know, we we don't want to spoil this game. Well, it's while well, it looks pretty fun and exciting, but uh, Pen Island immediately res recognized this. They ban out the. Ember Spirit. Meanwhile, first time Beacon winners ban the Legion Commander, probably assuming that Snapfire can, of course, be played as a support as well as an offlane. So they're considering, okay, if Snapfire is played as an offlane, as a support, we ban obvious offlanes that can benefit from Snapfire, such as, in this case, Legion Commander, who can lock someone in the duel while Snapfire rains down kisses on the opponent, which kind of sounds weird, but if you... <laughs> If you say it outright without like any with like zero context, but honestly, if you watch the game, like um, Snapfire would have done wonders with the Legion Commander. Plus, with the Gobble Up, it gives Legion Commander a free initiate without needing to use Blink Dagger. Um, Night Stalker is another ban by first time B Cup winner, so they do anticipate that this Snapfire is going to be playing as a support. Meanwhile, Pen Island ban out the Ember Spirit and the F Bat Rider to. Pace setting, tempo mids, who can do what Storm Spirit does, which is get level 6, rotate, um, dominate the lane pretty well, then get level 6, then start rotating and making space and rolling as with his teammates across the map. So, um, first time pickup winners are probably going to be picking mid this one. Pen Island is on the clock, 16 seconds left on their reserve time. Who do they end up picking? 
for their last selection. Probably something to help with their team fight, I'd say, because though this team does have pretty good ganking ability, they're not really strong team fight wise. And their last pick is a s Disruptor. All right, so this pretty much telegraphs that this Napfire is going to be playing in a core role. And first time Beacon Pointers respond with a Shadow Fiend. So now you have a, a very powerful glass cannon running the mid for first time pickup winners probably allow um this juggernaut to play a bit more of a mid-ish role because shadow f it depends on what build shadow fiend goes like magic f damage build telegraph the shadow fiend is going to be more of that ganking tempo setting mid because physical probably closer to a carry type build for mr Sh for mr smiley face here so i guess in this lineup i'd prefer pen island but only because they're the ones who requested this uh replay analysis um i kind of want to see how this game's gonna shake out also nice legendary on the side of um mr moon silver still looks kind of badass okay so before anything else let us set our camera mode to free camera all right ladies and gentlemen welcome to the rundown where we bring you the heroes and the heroes who are running them let's start first on the side of the radiant you have uh smiley face on shadow fiend rubber ducky on the lich thirst in the tide hunter rickle pick on juggernaut and black rose for you on the gyrocopter who is rolling up to the top lane with thirsty on your other side, on the dire side, you have Pen Island, Commendable Birthday Boy, aka Z Latch on the Storm Spirit, Moon Silver on the Lone Druid, J Bud on the Snapfire, Chesses on the Disruptor, and Emperor on the Witch Doctor. So they're so they're running Witch Doctor as a support as a support in this game. Well, uh, so as a probably it looks like a hard support from the looks of it, given that it's it's grabbed a ton of the sentries and wards. Meanwhile, you're they're having Chesses play this Disruptor as a 4, though. Pairing it with J-Bud's um, Snapfire for like a ton of magic damage. And pretty much great initiate. Moon Silver, of course, with his signature hero, the Lone Druid. Meanwhile, on the on the Radiant side, Rickle Pick and Rubber Ducky have positioned themselves to take the Radiant side uh, Bounty Rune. Same with a Smiley Face, who has planted a ward here and uh, near closer to his tower a bit. Meanwhile, of course... Uh, the support, the, the support emperor plants it a bit close, a bit here around the middle side of his tower. So not easily sniped because you don't really place wards here in the middle. Um, equal bounty runes on both sides. So we're, we're set up to what looks like to be a pretty even start to this game. Um, as the laning phase begins and the creeps start marching their way. So over in the mid lane, commendable birthday boy does end up losing the blocking battle to smiley face. So manages to block up it his creeps and commendable birthday boy just fails to block out or just one and that one helped delay the lane long enough for commendable birthday boy to for z latch rather to lose it a bit although it's actually kind of it turns a bit even now i'd say meanwhile at the top lane moon silver and thirsty are going hard at each other just trying to both secure last hits and secure some lane equilibrium black rose for you does eat a solo maledict from Emperor, interesting for a skill from Emperor here. Probably looking to get some lane domination. On the other side of the map, J Bud and Chesses have pulled the wave back closer to their tower. Meanwhile, Pickle Rick, a Rickle Pick rather, uh, his name's kind of annoying, so I will mess it up several times during this replay. Is probably trying to contest for last hits. He is leading everyone in last hits with six, the benefit of having such a really fast uh, base attack time on the hero allowing it to pretty much be useful in contesting all those picks uh z latch is zoning out this uh, mr smiley face pretty hard though he's taking advantage of the fact that um he does have a bit more health than uh than smiley face here thanks of course to the use of the two iron branches so he has dove a pretty deep deeper into his tower than he would have liked on the top lane moon silver and emperor have managed to maintain the equilibrium in their uh, closer to their tower, Thirsty, of course, being forced to push a bit closer to the enemy, the, the dire tier one top that he would have liked. First blood, though, is taken by Mr. Um, smiley Face. So the benefit, though, this one's to get to fa re uh, rewind this a bit just to see 
how exactly this all went down. So here in the mid lane, uh, commendable birthday boy and smiley face does, although smiley face does manage to get several good shadow raises. Commendable um, Zilich is dropping low. He does land the electric vortex in the, and as well as being forced to pop that fairy fire, but one more shadow raise will do it. And that's it for Mr. Uh, smiley face taking the first blood on the side of the radiant um moon silver and emperor and emperor still maintaining the equilibrium here meanwhile in the bot lane j bot is about to have health but rubber ducky does have the um thunder strike on him as well as rickle pick is dropping uh to about below half health thanks of course to the excellent harass from j bot and chest says like this magic damage is really doing a number on uh, Rickle pick not picking up the healing ward for some reason probably afraid that he's not gonna be able to protect it as well as he should have Zilich once again dropping low another set another hits by another raise this time the, I think I believe it's the E raise is the farthest one um, It does cast a static remnant just to get that overload charge in and harass Before he goes for the rune meanwhile in the mid lane. I mean well the top lane uh, apologies um, Moon silver and Emperor do have it. We have a pretty good job so far maintaining this in equilibrium here though oddly enough moon silver is the one who's built who started up himself he has a blades of attack and four iron branches where typically you might see lone druid players like go all in on the bear like have the bear get all the stuff um all right i guess we missed out the kill so let's rewind a bit and check out what happened uh zilach getting once again getting a bit too close to the un to this shadow fiend eating yet another set of shadow raises this was make shadow fiend such a difficult opponent to lane against. He is dropping low though. Uh, Shadow Fiend will be diving this pretty heavily and Smiley takes Zilich down at the cost of his life. The tower hits are sufficient to uh, to stop this Shadow Fiend dead in his tracks but he probably would have liked that exchange because he does get the health from, he does get the experience rather from killing um, Zilich first. So uh, Kill is down on Mr. Smiley Face here in the mid lane. Uh, meanwhile, in the bot lane, it's been a last hit battle between uh, Ricklepick and Jbod. Uh, Jbod does have the advantage with one, just one more uh, last hit, but three more denies than Ricklepick, who is uh, who is although is a bit ahead in experience, mainly because the um, his support rubber lock is doing a pretty good job staying back and not being super aggressive on the top lane moon silver and thirsty are still brawling at our black rose for you though has spotted out moon silver he is alone though his support emperor is putting the creeps probably to help him retain equilibrium meanwhile zilash getting hit once again with that shadow raise combo like um Z he already hit level six thanks to those two early solo kills on the commendable birthday boy um so far so good for mr smiley face yudi using really landing those uh shadow raises and helping him secure dominance over mist over mr zilach winter zilach though hits him both with the static remnant and the electric vortex just so that he could get away he does pull a couple of creeps behind his tier one order to help him safely farm but of course with the tower occupied with another wave of uh creeps from the radiant side, smiley feels strong enough to just push up uh five minutes in uh, we've hit our first night time of the game we will switch to the net worth once uh neutral items come out which is around the seven minute mark um homie missile is not locked on moon silver they're probably not looking for a kill the rocket barrage though comes in as well but emperor counters with the maledict moon silver is dropping low but now so is thirsty who does have the maledict he does pop his magic wand in order to keep himself alive moon seven silver is low and moon seven silver is dead may have Rotated to the wrong side of the map that time. Thirsty picking up a kill with the help of his support. There's a lot of time magic damage being dealt by this um being dealt by this uh dire uh, right, radiant off lane with that excellent hope use of the homing missile and recognizing that moon silver was a bit low. I mean we a bit weird on the where was he gonna go from that rotation, but uh okay. At least he's there, at least. Uh, you know, you know, probably knows better. Um, Sonja Strike and Static Kinetic Field s -Cop, but the Spin Rooney is activated. Rickle Pick using the Blade Fury to run down J-Bot. J-Bot is down. 
J Bud has been well. I think they tried catching out Robert Ducky, who is uh, less than uh, is about a third of his health. But Rickle Pick responding with that Blade Fury already leveled up to level three is going to deal like a ton of damage. Meanwhile, on the mid lane, uh, Zilech is dropping low to Mr. Smiley Face. He attempts to juke him out. Smiley Face is not amused. He gets him anyway with that one last hit. Um, Zilech is kind of having a bit of a despair lane. 1, 3, and 0 already on his um, mid lane Storm Spirit. Probably like the consequence for picking Storm Spirit pretty early. Not really pretty early. We picked it sec the second pick of the side of Dire. So I was thinking um, that's a, that, that was certainly a choice <laughs> from the storms from the from the Dire side to pick him pretty early. Thirsty and Black for Rack Rose for you once again. Isolate Moon Silver and take him down. Emperor though, um, not really taking the heat for his for his scary Moon Silver than you would have liked, but it's probably part of the plan I'd say, especially as. Um, Emperor is, of course, is in no position to be able to contest any of this aggressive ag ag uh, aggressive moves by the side of the Radiant. So I think it kind of makes sense for him that he's going to try and back off. Rubber Ducky does last the Frost, the frost Blast. Huh. Yes, huh? my skill was correct. He lands the Frost Blast on Chessus, but Chessus does end up healing thanks to that. Thanks to the use of bring up Infused Raindrops. It makes sense, of course, with the Frost Blast. Black Rose for you does take the top lane at eight minutes in. Hmm, pretty good stuff, I'd say. Um, these the Radiant side is leading in all categories. Smiley Face is already level eight with the DD rune, having won the second mid rune wars from uh, Mr. Zilat. He's not going to use this DD rune in attempt to take this mid tower early and open up the dire jungle for to con for control. Um, I probably not that concerned about it, I guess. After all, Moon Silver does have the uh, s does now have face boots on his bear, and he is forced to cast the ultimate, probably to try and save his life. But Black Rose for you finds out Emperor. He does get the full arsenal of skills and gets one more rocket barrage, and he is down. Meanwhile, let us rewind a bit to see what happened in that. Oh, by the way. Let's just rewind a bit to see how that the fight goes with Mr. Thirsty. Thirsty is being run down by Moon Silver, and he is dead. So, uh, Moon Silver does manage to get the offlane at the cost, of course, of four of his teammates. So let's let's back, let's move right back in time and see just what exactly happened in that bot lane skirmish. Yes. So it starts off with Rickle Pick. Um, Hitting both the Blade Fury with Rubber Ducky, hitting that Sinister Gaze. Kinetic Field is cast as well as the Glimpse to help J Bud escape. Does immediately pop the Salve in order to begin regaining some health though. But Rubber Ducky with an excellent ward on that lane. Rubber Ducky hitting him with the Frost Blast and as well as that fr Frost Shield. But the healing ward is up though. Rickle Pick though it doesn't do a good job protecting it. It is dead almost immediately. Uh, Zilech has come. He does zap, he zip zap shock attacks and. Robert Ducky is dead, but Rickle Pick managed to take down J-Bud, who may have bit on him more than he can chew. Chester falls as well. He does, Rickle Pick does fall to Z-Latch, but he ends up giving up his life instead to this smiley face, who takes him down with the haste rune coming in the clutch for the side of the Radiant. So, yes, they do manage to take down this carry, um, Juggernaut, but he loses three other heroes in the process, including their mid lane. So, uh, so far, um, Team Radiant is actually making, uh, actually making really good progress here in this lane, and may look to have a pretty. Uh, look to enter the mid game with a lot of advantage. 4K net worth lead nine minutes in. So, things are looking dire indeed for the dire. Um, now, of course, the play problem here is to have them start making rotations in place. I mean, you have to start using the strength of this lineup, which is more towards the ganking side. Uh, commendable uh, Zilech does get hit, w hit, hits Robert Ducky with all of his skills as well, but he, gets, he does continue to skate off, but it doesn't matter. The he also uses a glimpse, a glimpse back to send Mr. Thirsty back to the top lane. So, good stuff, I'd say, from... Uh, 
chesses and now they've overloaded this uh, bot lane they're looking for either a kill as well as a probably a tower kill on this one Miracle pick is playing with fire staying here <laughs> staying here in the bot lane with four heroes hunting him so he does his friend to get the spin probably in this spin and he will get some backup in rubber ducky and finally face here he does cast the omni slash and emperor is down and now the side of the radiant is giving chase but that kinetic field does catch them and the kisses is now starting to come out magic damage is to be uh, is beginning to be used by jbud but jbud though unable to get that for long the bouncy the, the bouncy icy or more no commonly known as chain frost has come out rico pick with that frost shield and spin a rooney combo good stuff meanwhile he does get emperor with the use of the requiem of souls but he is very very deep um emperor Smiley face does kill, or rather, he does give it to his support, Ruby Lich, but at the cost of Smiley face himself. Um, Static Storm being dropped by Chesses to attempt to dissuade Black Rose for you from taking this fight, but um, he ends up falling. Anyway, J Bud is the only one left here in this overloaded bot lane. So, quite a fight from the side of. Um, from both teams actually though they do take the more they do take more more deaths they are happy to kill this higher net worth um shadow fiend in this one so good stuff does zip zap was again comes in but he gets hit again with a sinister gaze but mr smiley comes back uh z Lech, though is forced to flee j bot is dropping low he is probably may not be able to get away but he doesn't with that ice blast the thirsty finally comes in you're not gonna deny me this time Mr. Chesses with that Ravage taking down um, Commendable Coming down Zilech and Emperor So all five members of the side of the Radiant are now here They're going to be taking this Radiant tier Or this Dire tier 1 bottom Which doesn't really um, It's not really like a valuable tower It's actually one of the harder towers to take But it will give them access to the Dire side triangle Which but now then allow them to immediately push out to the dire tier 2 bottom but a quick fortify does kill off all the creeps and force the rest of the team to back off uh they do decide to trade tower for tower though with moon silver pretty much unmolested after what has been a disaster laning phase for him being gone on twice although i mean again it's not the end of the world though fire Slap cookie does get landed on smiley face but the fire but yeah, scatter blast may not be enough but what is enough though all this magic damage both the static storm the maledict and the and the casks enough to take down this high, higher tiered uh smiley face but at the cost of course of both chesses and emperor and now j a bit on the run he will have a homing missile connect to him but i don't think there'll be any follow up because he's way way too behind uh z Lech does immediately tp back down to the bot lane probably looking for another fight with j bud but j bud doesn't have that much resources he doesn't have the fire snap cookie so but he does but z Lech does have his one his skills he does finally find black rose for you killing spree streak given up by black rose for you to uh z Lech. and does chesses know that they have blocked out their the dire truck the dire triangle although not really a good triangle takers i'd say um not yet at least given that um moon server does need a bit of a build up more on his bear his bear does have the maelstrom so we will have some easier time clearing towers meanwhile in the mid lane uh come the birthday boy does once again hit hit the smiley with everything smiley responds with everything as well so it's everything everywhere all at once for smiley hitting him with triple shadow rays and that requiem of souls um zilech is down and once again continuing this despair game what he's had so far um 7k net worth lead uh static storm is dropped as well as the kinetic field but it might have been a mistake to land that glimpse especially with the haste rune active chess is now dropping low the emperor though does manage to catch him out with both the cask and the maledict but Chesses is dead anyway, thanks to the arrival of this, thanks to the arrival of the Lich. Meanwhile, they finally, meanwhile, um, G Lich does come back. They finally catch out the Smiley Face in an uncompromising position. He is dead. Two heroes down already on the Radiant with 
the um Mr. Lich taking a tumble as well. So they're coming back. I mean, this is this has been a pretty big golden XP change swing on the side of the dire side. So you know, um, they're finally coming back. They're 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 finally making use of their strengths and. Radiant has been uncharacteristically sloppy. They're starting to make mis they're starting to make mistakes. They're diving a bit more to take a chew. So, but they do have three heroes here positioned on the mid lanes. Smoke is up on the both of them. Rickle pick also does close in as well. He only has a maelstrom though, so I'm not sure what kind of damage he'll be able to do. Uh, Thirsty misses the ult and now uses those bounces from the chain frost to get. Moon Silver. Moon Silver is dead. The Mortar Burst Cases isn't enough to make the Radiant side back off. Ra El Ravejo is used but countered immediately by the cask. Yellow doesn't really matter. Emperor does fall as well. So, um, kind of weird use of the Ravage to kill a boss 5, but okay, I'll take it. It's an early Ravage. They are able also to follow up this one. Plus, he does have the Shard Tendrils of the Deep, which gives him an additional stun. So, it's like, okay, I'm not really super concerned. Since it is a mini Ravage as well, mid t tower may be falling down quite quickly in that, due thanks to that engagement. So, mid a tier 2 mid taken by the side of the Radiant, even without the aid of Aegis. 8k gold lead on the side of the Radiant in eight, 16 minutes in. Um, Rickopec is forced to use the Blade Fury to block the glimpse, but he may have paid for it with his life, the arrival of Zilich. And J but last landing the scatter blast. Edich takes the kill and the tower as well. So it does give um the dire this dire team the access to Radiant's jungle and allows them to push or to begin to push towards the Radiant tier two bottom. Meanwhile, J but does end up pushing the tier two top thanks to excellent pressure being committed by the side of the Radiant up here. So with the game entering a bit of a lull, let's take stock of what each team has. Start with a dire, of course. So, Moon Silver does have, still have those four uh, iron branches. You know, he is part of the, he is one with his nature side. Uh, his spirit bear does have the face boots and the maelstrom immediately going towards that Mjolnir for faster farming and attack speed. Doesn't really need a disable with the with the entangling claws, of course. Meanwhile, Zilech um, does have his boots. He has this bottle which is empty he's building up towards a kaya and going immediately towards kaya sanj which makes sense giving it giving that he's the one pretty much frontlining for this team with his uh electric ball lightning dives meanwhile on the offlane jbud is if i can select jbud there you go jbud does have the guardian greaves so it will have some a great healing and dispel for the side of his team building now towards the pipe of insight given that they have quite a amount of magic damage on the side of Radiant. Meanwhile, on the Radiant side, um, there you go, we found him. Uh, Rickopic does have only, so far, the uh, face boots and the, and the Maelstrom. The early fight's not really doing well for its farming patterns. Meanwhile, he does smoke up with his mid and his support. His mid smiley face does have the Dragon Lance and the Master Madness, and they use the excellent use of the Sinister Gaze to find Chesses. Uh, trying to get a couple of creep waves before he is, <laughs> before, uh, you know, just trying to take the dangerous farm in the map and paying pretty dearly for it. So this uh, smiley face is go SF, is going for more. Carrier build, carry build with this Mask of Madness and uh, Dragon Lance. So these are kind of both farming items. Still for him, more of a fighting item. Emperor though does get hit with the Sinister Gaze, who has the Tendrils of the Deep, um, and one more hit from Smiley Face does finish off Emperor. So these deeper rotations by the so if you see a common theme in these last two. That's more like the rotations on the of the supports of the side of the Dire not really panning out and the Radiant side reacting to it accordingly, either smoking up to kill it or exploiting the fact that he dove pretty deep into the unsafe portion of the map. Meanwhile, Thirsty, the Tired Hunter, has the dagger, he has the arcane boots, and he has this shard, which gives him a, another mini ravage, which another mini ravage which can be directed in the line. So it's not really like starving for support, for, uh, control here though uh once again they do manage to drop at rickle pick who does dive again a bit too deep and the rest of the dire follows suit rickle pick is dead 
playing a bit more off laning because again, um, since they are playing at uh, Shadow Fiend, it typically shows that uh, the this Juggernaut will play a bit, a lot more aggressively in this game. Of course, they still have a 5k network lead in this one, but pretty substantial gold change um, for the side of the Dire with that carry kill. Meanwhile, um, Moon Seven Silver does take the mid lane, but they're hoping to respond by taking the top lane as well. So, not only does um, the Radiance side now have full control of the Dire jungle, they may also position themselves to a Roshan. Uh, if they uh, do take the outpost already though because of the earlier destruction of this mid tier 2 so now they're immediately parlaying into that Roche fight now that they have control um, quite a lot of damage will be going on on this team of course with the smiley face picking up the PKB uh, pretty good stuff uh, Thirsty still working on that Aghanim's scepter so that he can have much stronger uh, pushing and fighting capabilities and Im almost immediately the Radiant take the first Roche at 21 minutes in. We're going to see Mr. Roche in about 7 minutes and 50 seconds, I'd say. Meanwhile, Moonsilver does finally finish that Mjolnir on his bear. Um, he going straight for the Basher to give himself another disable for these fights. Again though, they ha although they are... They have taken control of much of this game. Um, it's not like the side of the Dire is still out of it. There's still only five, only 5k five up ahead, even with this kind of kill lead. So good stuff so far from the Dire to keeping this game close net worth wise and making sure that even though they are falling behind on the kills, they're not necessarily falling behind on the items. And with this Aegis, they're beginning to try to threaten this top tier three of the Dire. Um, both the scary and the mid are chilling here in the middle in the top lane. Meanwhile, the rest of the rest of the dire have positioned themselves. This tower is dropping very fast, of course, thanks to that presence aura affects buildings talent. Meanwhile, the rock the homing rocket does immediately kill out killed out by the rest of this team. But with allow them to quickly push back in. The tendrils does get a double tendrils as well as a double. <laughs> Well, as the Ravage, but it was not enough to control Mr. Uh, Z Mr. Zilatch, but he does land away. And Rickle Pick makes another hefty mistake by Omni Slashing. And do a, do a good job of, uh, you know, Omni, of Omni Slashing him to the tower, forcing him back. Meanwhile, though, this fight is going very disastrously. Aegis now has been popped. Um, both the, support, the supports and... <laughs> Both supports are dead, and Moon Silver has activated his ultimate. They may have bitten off more than they can chew. Dire are have taken a really good fight here at their at their base. Should have focused on taking down the tower. Honestly, that was quite a dive from the side of the Radiant. It may be instrumental how this game goes. Black Rose for you is dropping a bit low. Decides to farm up some creeps, you know, just try to get some experience. But the Dire side immediately spotting him out and forcing him ever more outward. So, what a fight! What a fight! Good, good stuff. Good, good fight from the side of the Dire, taking advantage of the Radiant getting really, really cocky and starting to uh, disrespect their opponents a bit by pushing up way too deep into their high ground and, of course, paying for it. So, good stuff from the side of the Dire. Let's see if they can parlay this into a later game I think if I lay this into a victory down the line I guess again this game is not over only less than 1k gold now separates both teams like uh, f from a high of like I think 7 it is starting to drop significantly or yeah not really, yeah I think it was 7 I guess 90% uh, win probability at around the 12th or 13th minute mark it's now starting to drop though a bit to 67% chance of victories. So they're coming back, you know, they're coming back. Smoke up on the side of the Dire. They're probably looking now to make a fight with Basher completed on Moon Silver. Um, as I just seen, Zilech does also pick up the BKB as well. He does spot out this, um, 
the smiley face who is get hit by the entire combo and he is dead moon silver immediately transforms into the massive bear form um z ledge does get rubber ducky rubber ducky is down as well as mr rickle pick once again bit of martin can chew this team is now online and is now moving fast and black rose for you feels the wrath so four kiro's dead and now all of a sudden this team has turned on its head the 2k gold lead now on the side of the tire and they're immediately beginning to push down into the tier three top with four heroes dead and not much opposition in the way except for thirsty who does already have his agonim's scepter built so he's gonna be able to push out these late waves and slow up their farm but it won't be enough of course against moon silver and his bear who are really smashing the towers with the quickness um j bud also picks up that wraith pack probably shifting away from the pipe of inside upon realizing that yeah much of the damage is actually it will be physical with uh shadow fiend and uh this juggernaut leading the way so it makes sense that uh decides to pick up the wraith pact instead i mean wraith pact is nerfed from the highs it used to have in the old patches but it's still pretty good especially against lineups with a strong melee presence so uh j bud making use of that smoke to safely kill the creeps meanwhile uh ravage has been used as well as the requiem of souls and now radiant has managed to fight back they have taken down three including moon silver himself 1k gold lead separating both teams this time so the radiant getting a good fight on their own maybe because this time they're rolling as a five like they have much stronger team fight i don't understand why they're letting thirsty farm off by himself a bit when uh with his items like he's he can already start just taking fights at this point although he is building his own guardian games which does make sense at this point um they probably should have done it earlier or the thing i think that that was the comeuppance for them losing about a couple of fights in a row so pretty good gold and xp change on the side of the radiant homing missile is used but jay but immediately countering it with that uh rapid fire little shredder meanwhile um rickle pick does end up taking down the top lane but may eat some kisses and is forced to use a blade fury in response and now they're kind of equal in that sense uh we're in both the both sides have a tier one down so but the radiant though do have both tier one or both have mid and top quite pushed out although the mid has been has has been dealt with now they're preparing to make their own push into the mid lane as well as are being smoked up roshan will be up in one minute and 12 seconds so uh, i should I think both teams are pretty much chilling, you know. Um, it's more of Dire just trying to retake their top jungle, allowing them to regain control of the outpost, as well as position themselves for a potential second Roche. Meanwhile, his target acquired by Zilech. He does get the Lich. The Lich, though, is dropping low, but the homing missile will be locked on him, but he dodges it with the ball lightning. Good stuff from Mr. Zilech, and Rubber Ducky is down. Um, this probably means that, although it's a bit early though, Roche is not spawning in about 30 seconds. So, I don't think, so while they do get the kill, it, it may not be enough for them to, to be confident enough to take Roche. Because he will be back by the time Roche does end up spawning. So, both teams are, or rather at least the dire side is preparing to position around their Roche pit. Um, Chester's end, Zilatch pushing out this top lane alongside jaybud who's cutting the creeps a bit he's not working on anything specifically let's see what he does end up building meanwhile on moon silver he is building now towards the assault kiras to give himself and his bear even more of everything um meanwhile um Zilech does have he is building now towards that agon himself they're giving himself their own black hole in the upgraded overload um and j bud uh, again as previously stated is not building anything i'd say he's probably just holding on to his buyback deciding what am i supposed to build now meanwhile on the other side um rickle pick does have that renta style and beyond they are completed so he is almost he is pretty much full like with this we can take a five plus of course the excellent blade fury though i, I reckon he needs a basher 
before I feel confident in him taking fights or as well as a dagger as well to get to catch the back line which is being well protected by Zilach. Meanwhile Smiley Face does have uh, the Hurricane Pike finished out so another saving item for here that already deals a lot of damage so it makes sense for him that he's start building a bit more on the save side. Meanwhile uh, Thirsty does have the Aghanim Scepter complete as previously mentioned and is still going for this Guardian Greaves which is taking a while. Ra smoked up on the side of the Radiant. They're now probably going to be looking for a fight. I think instead of just chilling behind the, I mean, they're they're hard baiting this um, smiley face. It's, it's a pretty obvious move, and I commend uh, the side of the dire for not taking the bait so quickly. Uh, commendable birthday boys is forced to use the BKB just hard to secure this, but they do end up spotting him up anyway. Emperor using that glimmer cape to get away, but now they do isolate. The Rickle Pig, Rickle Pig is hit with the Sphere as well as the Mortimer's Kisses. But the Kisses are a bit all over the place and Rickle Pig anyway dies. So, uh, Ice Chain Frost though doesn't work though. With Moon Silver smoked up and the since it doesn't see him, the bounce isn't going to bounce. So Rickle Pig is dead. And all of a sudden, the Dark Side are now smoked up and they're looking for their own fight as well. Uh, thirsty. Thirsty though does use that uh, upgrade and she's got the back of Rubber Ducky though is falling low. He gets hit with that little shredder. The Ravage comes out and hits two heroes. Good stuff, but Emperor is maybe caught out, but they do catch out the rest of the heroes in that static storm. Thirsty though is dropping low. Thirsty has fallen. Requiem of Souls has been used by um, Smiley Face, but that Wraith Pack really putting in work. Um, Smiley Face is down. Excellent use of the Wraith Pack to negate the damage. Uh, good fight so far. And I think this fight isn't over by a long stretch of the word. Black Rose for you is being chased by Zilach. Zilach though will back off. And I think that is the end of that. Massive gold swing and experience swing on the side of the Radi of the Dire. Managing to take, off to take advantage of or rather counter initiate the move made by the Radiant to smoke up and take the triangle fight. But um, they recognize, okay, we feel pretty strong to fight, but he is, Rickle Pick is picking up the PKP. I guess it's in order for him to survive through the Static Storm, through Mr. Zilech's magic damage, and through J-Bud's magic damage, and Emperor's magic damage as well. Quite a lot of magic damage in the team, so it kind of makes sense he's going for this, um, bat though for his PKP. Though it's not really a natural PKP carrier. Of course, he does have the Slave Fury, which makes him spell immune, but doesn't really matter though, I guess, with all the magic damage that is happening in this world. Um, Dire do take the Roshan. Shard is given to Zilach, who now ha has an upgraded overload to play with, which um, makes his overload unactivatable and gives him three, ex three charges right off the bat. So even more damage. It's going to go to the side of Mr. Zilach. Good stuff. Um, Shesses is probably going to be looking to stack, I guess. But no, it's going to be farming this instead. It is only about two minutes. But Zilach takes it anyway. You know, the life of the sport. What can you do? On the other side of the map, both teams have settled into farming, I'd say. Like, uh, being a bit passive. I, th I, th I guess they're doing a great job of winning the fights until they have their all their skills up which they do static storm is up uh, and it's just working on that pkb they do have the mortimer's kisses they have the death both versions of the death ward and the voodoo switcheroo turning uh emperor into a death ward of his own and now the side of the dire have begun pushing into the radiant jungle they're looking for a fight somewhere they know that rickle pick is somewhere here because he did leave these illusions behind to be farming and pushing <laughs> Farming and pushing this wave, and now Zilach recognizes this. May have been trying to go for a kill, and Rickle Pick does back off. Both teams are now congregating on the bottom side of the map, probably looking for a fight now that uh, the side of the Dire have Aegis as well. Let's see if their high ground siege will work out this time. Um, Rubber Ducky is positioned here in the trees, looking for a great opportunity to land his Chain Frost. Uh, Mighty Face does is the one to step out. He does have the butterfly finish, so it's gonna give him a lot of evasion and another both survivability and damage item though. So 
It's interesting that he's dealing a lot of survivability when his damage is already being challenged by the use of the Wraith pack. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see as well. BKB is almost done on the Juggernaut, but I think he's holding on to his buyback, I guess. Yeah, he's holding on to his buyback in case any of these fights like turn south, and they can turn south quickly. Kind of interesting that he didn't give the shard to J, but, but you know, mid comes first. And like in the hierarchy of uh, farming, mid comes first. Smoke up on the side of the arena. They're now looking for a fight, uh, hoping to catch out the Aegis carrier. Do the side of the Dire know this? Probably because they are backing off. Um, Rubber Ducky is, and the rest of the Radiant is pushing up. They do find Moon Silver. They miss the Ravage. And is the last hit enough to take Mr. Moon Silver? Moon Silver, they know it has the Agonims. Um, it doesn't matter though to him. Jay Bud does take down uh, Thirsty. Thirsty with that. Um, with all those hits allowing him to take down Moon Silver and popping the Aegis. Meanwhile, the Smiley Face is in the back line looking and hunting for all their magic damage. Buyback is used on the side of Emperor. He does have, he, he doesn't have, or he does use his BKB now. He, or rather, he doesn't have it. It's on cooldown. He's dropping low. He is dead. The buyback from Emperor and him staying behind, not getting any backup at all. Allows him to be killed off. Oh, Rickopic is dropping low. Moon Silver is way too tanky for this boy. And he is down. Disastrous fight on the side of uh, the Dire. And now he even buys back 13k net worth lead on the side of the Dire. This is the Dire team is starting to run away. Probably starting, starting. Like this runaway train is not full speed ahead. But it's starting. It's like it's leaving the station, I'd say. Uh -huh. Well, it's clear that momentum and initiative are no longer on the side of the Radiant. It has not been fully taken over by the side of the Dire, so they're coming back, you know, they're coming back. This game ain't over yet by a long shot on either side. Um, especially they did manage to take some kills on the side of the Dire, but it's not enough, I'd say, to salvage, it wasn't enough to salvage the team fight, especially. So um, this is a critical moment in for both teams like the both teams are now farming up for the fourth fifth or sixth items you know in order to help their enable their next power spike chesses though will ha does have the agonims moon silver immediately building the mkb in response to the butterfly so pretty good stuff on the side of uh the dire same thing with mr zilat who does have the who does have the hex in so he's not building up towards the shiva's guard now you know stack loading intelligence in order for him to be able to fight on the other side snapfire j bot or rather j bot snapfire does have his shard as well or rather does have the scythe as well so a couple of scythes and a lot of disabled going into the way doing the way of the dire he does have the cookie it is on the way and it does have the cookie upgrade in the shard and is on the way now on the other side rickle pick is kind of hard stuck here in his uh BKB probably a mistake to keep building BKB. Well, at, at this point, you should start building damage on the other side. Um, Smiley Face does have it's still hard stock on this item. It's not really building up because he was forced to buy back in order to salvage that last fight. Thirsty um, is still building towards Garden Grief. So a lot of items on the side of the Dire has been delayed thanks to them losing a couple of fights that they probably shouldn't have. And now the net worth lead is really steadily growing 14k lead uh the the radiant do still lead in kills but the dire are catching up i'd say they're winning the fight they're winning not as many fights but they're winning the more important fights i'd say one last tower to take before the radiant side is fully turtled up moon silver and his lone druid spirit bear end up taking down the tower by his lone self Shard has been picked up by um, Mr. Smiley Face, so it will allow him to deal more damage as well as with the fear aspect at the cost of like a soul on that hit. But you know, it does give him two souls per kill this time, so good stuff. Um, they will have excellent high ground here with the th with the Tidebringers upgraded Gush as well as Shadow Fiend and Black Rose for you. <sighs> Uh, sorry, apologies. I did sleep in late a bit last night. I watched John Wick Chapter 4 with my family. Great film. By the way, I recommend that you guys watch. It is a bit on the long side, but 
it's a, it's a, it's pretty good. Uh, well, well done stuff. Hex is now being used side of as well. BKB though being used on the side of Mr. Uh, Z Ledge, and they do take down both cores. So almost immediately, this fight is an unmitigated disaster on the side of the uh, Radiant with that black hole um, overload with a black hole uh, electric vortex now being used. Uh, Moon Silver is dropping low. Aegis has, Aegis has already popped. Rico Pick is forced to buy back, but he does kill Moon Silver. We don't buy back as well. Hex, however, is being used on the side of the Dire on their poor, um, on poor Rico Picks. So it won't be sufficient to get the kill, but they do end up getting the kill on Mr. J Bud. So a buyback was committed on the side of Radiant, but they do hold their top. They do hold the top, like the top. Tier three is not yet down, and it's not bad. I mean, yes, it did cost them a buyback, but they do hold the top lane, and now they feel safe enough to make moves and start pushing out towers again on the map. So, good stuff from the side of the ra of the radiant. They're not out. Of, they're not out of the woods just yet, but this should at least put them a bit closer to finding that dirt road towards civilization. Um, they just need to take a couple more good fights like that and then manage their high ground much better. Like, their high ground fight, that high ground, previous high ground fight allowed the side of the Radiant to finally take advantage of the, finally take the side of the Dire at least to retake this game so far. Bot, uh, the ra top tier racks on the range side has been taken by the Radiant, so they will have the enhanced range creeps beginning to push in to or into their top lanes. So that's something that the um, Dire needs to take note of. Meanwhile, Roche is not yet up. Nope, unfortunately, he's about 20 seconds too early, but they are close though. So that's why they're positioning themselves around their triangle. They're looking to take a Roche fight of their own. Meanwhile, Mr. Smiley Face is building out towards the Satanic. Another sustained defensive item for himself. He has disassembled that Mask of Madness. Now, he doesn't need it anymore with the uh, Butterfly's attack speed. So now it's time to build up that sweet, sweet uh, sustainability. You know, he's going green, so to speak. Trying to, be, to live a more sustainable and healthy lifestyle. Um, Radiant is a bit clumped up here. They probably understand that this dire team feels really strong so they're not taking any chances they're not like isolating themselves on the map now even while pickle rick is farming or rickle pick is farming he does have his black rose for you here to support up and to guard him in case he does get god on which is a possibility all right um 43 minutes into this game, Roshan has now spawned. So I think this will be the next big thing that may decide this the fate of this game for both the Radiant and the Dire. Um, Radiant side is now moving up towards this Rosh side. Meanwhile, the Dire side is still pretty split. They're still all farming up. Are they aware that the Roshan is up and do, will they be able to contest it? Probably, but they are st starting to converge. j -Bud and Chess is now m moving their way through the jungle starting to play a bit closer to their mid game radiant is still grouped up are they looking for a smoke where's the smoke there is no smoke that is unfortunate Ravage has been used. Here comes the team fight. They do manage to send us as well. Chess uh, is dead. No, no let's get used, but they do end up using the buyback on him. And the damage coming out from Emperor does isn't enough. The the side of the arena do take out Moon Silver. So good start to their team fight on the side of the Radiant. But now Static Storm has been used. Emperor is the recipient of a really good. On this slash, and now the dire side is fighting back. They do take down Black Rose for you, but um, they are, are they sure? Are they, are they still gonna try and pursue this? Probably. Hex has been used on uh, Smiley Face, but Smiley Face does back off. What a fight! 
from Radiant. Radiant getting that initiation. I think it really falls down to who gets that initiation first. G-Bot is caught on with that Sinister Gaze, but Smiley is trapped. He does, not, though, he, though, since he's just suited, he does manage to land his uh, ultimate. But the side of the Dark Radiant is caught out by that excellent Black Hole. So another buyback being committed just for that. So they end up winning out in the end, staying there a bit too long. And remember, he just bought back, so you now he's 100 se seconds, no buyback. Aegis is up. And I'm not sure, though, if they're going to take it. Since Moon Silver doesn't have his uh, trusty bear, oh no, he does now. He just used it. So I think they might parlay this into a Roche, or they're just going to push down, take advantage of the fact that, um, or at least force them to expend buybacks in a fake defense to the base. Now we're going to go for Roche, of course. Buyback is now committed on the side of Smiley Face. So their course, I thought uh, buyback now as committed as well. Now only. Mr. Thirsty and Mr. Zilich have buybacks on either side with the buybacks now committed. So this, uh, so this should be interesting, I'd say. Um, going now into the Roche pit, J-Bud has spotted out that Roche is up. I, it, they are convenient to converge to take it. Moon Silver does have his good old bear back. He dropped all of his uh, branches for some reason, but okay, man, you do you, dude. Spirit Bear though is a really, really big boy. He does have the uh, Assault Kiras and the Hunt and the MKB. This Roach is falling down very, very fast thanks to Mr. Moon Silver and the rest of the Dire. Really harvesting all the resources from this. But I think I found him. The Ravage once again used and the Chain Frost, the, the Call Down and the Requiem of Souls. But is it enough? Um, he is dropping rather. He is dropping though, he is dead. Not even the damage was sufficient. We have the magic damage. We have more magic damage than you. Black Rose and Thirsty do end up falling on the side of the Dire. And while they did have the right intention to take on a Dire team that may have been weakened from Roche, it, they went about it the wrong way and paid for their lives as a result. As a result, 25k gold lead now on the side of Team Dire. Flip Zap, Shock Attack being used. November, this. Um, this has no buyback. The stun though is finally used, but uh, the genetic field will not hold down this um, Rickle pick. But what will not what will not be what will be held down though is the ranged racks. Ranged racks for mid does come down on the side of the radiant, and now they once again go into the black hole with the kinetic field and the call down in an attempt to force them back. But the Bloodstone keeping him alive. The Chain Frost though was forced him back. Moon Silver is recipient of one long Omni Slash, but there's so much damage. And the Hex now being used. Mickle Pick is down. 94 seconds, no buyback. This is turning to an immediate disaster. J Bud though does fall to Black Rose for you. The damage was finally sufficient to take him out. The Static Storm though does hit Black Rose for you. And Moon Silver goes right into the right into their tower. And this may be it. The speed of and power of this um root root is way too much for the side of the die they do end up calling it gg on the side of Penn island dire what a game and what a comeback on um the side of what a game on the side of the dire great work on Knowing when their advantage, knowing what their advantage is, taking advantage of the fact that, uh, oh, you know, like they're 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 playing way too greedily than you might expect, and as a result, they do end up paying for it. Um, great work on the side of uh, Penn Island. They do have a much slower early game, I'd say, but they turn it around and take advantage of several mistakes on the side of. Uh, first time B Cup winners, of course, with the obvious mistake, of course, being the the fact that they should have uh, they shouldn't have dove that tier three in that tier three uh, dire push. They shouldn't have dove deeper into their high ground. It cost them a lot and gave Penn Island the opening for them to take back the victory. Well done. So my MVP of the match for the side of Penn Island. I'd have to say, I'd have to give it to Mr. 
moon silver moon silver though f uh farming a ton with the five wraith bands Jeez, almost six wraith bands Jeez, sir that's a ton of stats on your dr lone druid but good stuff for mr moon silver um he is the one who has been taking down tower solo he's the one who's been frontlining for this team during their fights as well as uh the one who has who really has shown us the definition of being a hard carry he he did excellent work in this game uh just patiently farming patiently um holding his ground to the point that when the time came for him to fight and fight he does um so good job for mr moon seven silver my uh, Co-MVP or runner-up MVP for this one has to go to Mr. Zilech. Happy birthday, sir. Even with the poor start to his game, um, he does he does what he's supposed to do. He does jump the backline. He gets the key disables on their cores. And he does a ton of work for his team. So, uh, partly, he does recover from that early early game despair and moves on. To have a really successful mid game, the picking up the Aghanim Scepter was big, I'd say, since it really disrupted what uh, Radiant was going to do. My MVP for the side of the Radiant has to be Thirsty, mainly because they just couldn't fight without him. Like, Thirsty was all of their initiate. He was, as long as they had Thirsty, they, they could win that fight. Although, finally, it caught up to them in the end game when their last fight ultimately didn't go the way that they would have liked. But, you know, uh, that's what happens when you start falling behind. You start make, don't make those aggressive moves. So good job, Mr. Thirsty. Wish his team moved a bit faster, I'd say. Like they had a really good early game advantage, but just couldn't uh and close out. Like it's it's typically a problem though, like with especially with lower ranks that they're not necessarily mechanically bad. They're just decision making wise, it's not as good or as crisp as you'd see from uh higher tiers or from higher tiers of the battle cup, of course. So this is it for the review for the replay analysis of this uh first game of the battle cup this was the only one requested if he requests more i can do more but it depends though I, I might be busy this sunday so uh thank you once again for watching i am aaron zero have a good day